This one's a little bit different. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna peel back the curtains here. No, no bumper music, no crazy graphics, just me and my new friend. Well, possible foe, Jake Rice. So I said West Virginia is gonna go one and eleven. That's what I said on this show. I put a graphic out too. Jake didn't like that. Jake thinks I'm an idiot, and Jake, I understand why, but I want to know what is this West Virginia makeup? What is this team and what's the ceiling? Okay. Well, I can start with rather going over our team or going over the people we're facing this year. There we go. Two different paths. Let's start. go the schedule too. Give me give me that. The teams you're facing. Okay. For one, we got very lucky with the Big 12 schedule. To begin, we have a very tough schedule. We play Penn State. Don't expect to win there, obviously. But I'm expecting us to at least be competitive. Yeah. Pitt, they just lost their quarterback. Things are a little bit in turmoil over there. They've lost uh, their wide receiver to USC last year. It's just unpredictable things there. And they're coming to Morgantown. We went up there, barely lost. And the one of the key reasons why we lost is because our wide receivers couldn't hold on to the ball. We would have won if we would have gone for it on fourth and inches. Yeah. Or if Bryce Ford Wheaton didn't drop a ball that went right to his chest and it went for a pick six. That is a game we should win. We are in Morgantown. It's a night game. There's no reason why we can't beat Pitt. No reason. I think Neil Brown learned from his mistakes last year, and he knows he has to be more aggressive this year. I don't have as much stock in Pitt as I did last year. I thought they were much better last year than they are this year. Yeah. And I think we are a better team than we were last year. So I can't see us losing that game this year. And then we have Duquesne. Easy game. Yeah. Easy. All right. Let's go into the Big 12. I can't get the exact schedule off the top of my head. Texas Tech next. Texas Tech. Texas Tech. We have Neil Brown is 0 4 against Texas Tech. This is the year he has to beat Texas Tech. Yeah. I mean, I'm being realistic. We have to beat Texas Tech or TCU. One of the two. Most likely this year is Tech. Just because it's a home game this year. I haven't done much research on Tech just because I'm a fan. I don't do this for a living, you know. Yeah. But. I am pretty sure they have a new quarterback this year. Am I correct? Yeah, they they balance between guys who have been there. They had a three headed monster last year, so this will be technically a first complete year starting quarterback. I'll give it to you. Yeah. Okay. So unpredictable there. I don't necessarily see us beating Tech, but I think it's going to be a competitive game. So let's say so you've already so I said one and eleven. You've already given me three wins in the first five. I think that's it's Penn State, Duquesne, Pittsburgh, Texas Tech, TCU. You see a three and two as a reasonable first five games. Yeah, I see it reasonable, but I'm not going to lie. Three and three and two or two and three is what I expect to begin the season. Gotcha. Then you get Houston, one of the new beats on the, the road. team I'm expecting to beat. Okay. Dana Holgerson is an overrated coach. When he was here, <laughs> it was awful watching him coach. The yeah. defenses were terrible. His recruiting was god awful. And not to mention his record here wasn't even that great with countless great transfer quarterbacks. Will yeah. Greer significantly underperformed. My AC just kicked on. Is that gonna bother you? Not at all. Okay. Uh, I actually wrote down his record at Houston. His record at Houston is twenty seven and twenty, and that is with playing two to four power yeah. five teams a year. If that, if that. Yeah, last year it was 0-2 versus Big 12 teams, and those are the only two Power 5 schools that he played all season. That was to Kansas and Tech, too. That wasn't even the top teams in the league. So I can't see us losing to Houston this year, especially with how mad our fans are going to be and how amped up our team is going to be after they just took four or five guys from us. Yeah. I mean, they're literally taking our scraps, and one of them is their starting running back, Tony Mathis, the only reason why he transfers is because he got put on fourth in the depth chart here. Yeah. We had three younger running backs get bumped ahead of him, and he didn't like that, so he went down <clears throat> to Houston with the guy who recruited him. That's an easy win in my opinion. So if we go two and four or two and three to start, or three and two, that gets us up to four wins or three wins. Yep. Uh, the next game that I know we can win is Cincinnati. Yeah, we play them week seven. Oh, I think it's November eleventh, so that's in the later uh, or November eighteenth, actually. It's so like week twelve ish. Okay, so they just lost their entire team. They have 
it's rather five or seven people returning on offense and defense. Yeah. With a new head coach from Louisville who just went 25 and 24, one game. Wasn't very good there. Yeah, they're, everybody is on them like they're going to win eight games entering the Big 12. They've been playing an easy schedule these past few years since they've been in the Big East. They're not ready for Big 12 games, and especially not deep into the season at Mountaineer Field where there's 60,000 fans screaming at them top-notch, which will most likely be a night game because they're trying to portray that as a rivalry game. Yeah, yeah. I just cannot see us losing to Cincinnati. I don't see anything on their team to be excited about. Their new head coach doesn't deserve that job, in my opinion. He did nothing at Louisville. And honestly, Louisville is thanking Cincinnati for taking that coach so they didn't have to pay him. So, Jake, you've given me at least five and seven here, which in today's college football is a bowl season. So yeah. you've you've got the Mountaineers at a, a stable five and seven, not to say that four and eight can't happen or that six and six or seven and five can't happen. Yeah. And from a schedule breakdown standpoint, 100 percent, what my one and 11 and, and it's something that I, I do want to walk back here. On the one and eleven, it's it's as if I picked every coin flip and said loss, 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 right? As if West Virginia won't go at least three and nine as a net because that's what Big Twelve teams do, right? There's so much parity in this league that there's no way this team actually goes one and eleven. So uh, I don't want to say uneducated on my part. I did my research, but at the same time, I didn't take into account coin flips are coin flips because it's fifty fifty. Yep. You don't lose every coin flip, but the one thing I think I'm hanging my hat on here, and I want to know your thoughts on, on Neil Brown. I mean, nobody's been this bad at West Virginia since the late 1970s. How do you not, he feels like a dead man walking. How do you not fire Neil Brown at this point? Buyout. That's it. The buyout is way too high. Our last athletic director gave him an extension when he didn't deserve it. And it put yeah. us in a position that we could not afford to buy him out for at least two years. And this is year two. Do you now? So do you root for? Again, I was an Arkansas fan growing up. We used to root for Arkansas to lose, so they would fire the head coach. We wanted Brett Bielema to lose, so they'd can the guy. Where do you sit? I mean, this team goes eight and four. He buys himself more time. Do you want that? It's conflicting. As a Mountaineer fan who has never missed a Mountaineer football game in my entire life, that is home. I can't root against us. I can't say that I want us to lose. It's yeah. not in my nature. And saying that, Neil Brown is an ideal guy, but yeah. he's just not a quality coach. He is bringing in great character kids. He's developing them, and he shows that he cares with each of these kids. He's great with the media. It's just he's not winning, and he's not – the main thing is he's not being aggressive on the field. Yeah. He's been too passive and it's he's treating it like we're the underdogs 24 7 instead of walking into games and acting like we're the bad, tough guys on the field. TCU like, last year could have been a win. TCU could have been a win last year. There was about three games last year that were just poor decision making that yeah. equaled losses. And I mean, there's a couple games where we pulled off miracles too. And I think towards the end of the year, when he took play calling back from Graham Harrell, we really started to do better. Yeah, I honestly was not big on Graham Harrell. Yeah, I the play calling was awful with him. Watching us against Pitt, I was losing my mind. And I mean, I can't see him doing very well. Is it at Purdue or Vanderbilt? He went to Purdue. Yeah, oh, so Purdue. Purdue. Yeah, I just there's a reason why he went there. I mean, it's not a very good program to be yeah. honest. I mean, I mean, there wasn't any other options for him. There, Jake. I, I'm at a point with West Virginia where. I, I hope the team do, and from outside of perspective, I hope the team does bad so that Neil Brown is fired. Because again, this is to me a top three easiest place to win in the Big Twelve. Everyone who stepped into Morgantown has won football games in the last forty years, except for Neil Brown. So I'm I'm yeah. less so saying, hey, one and eleven is is a bad thing and more, man. I I hope whatever happens this year, Neil Brown's gone. Uh, or, I mean, if a magical 9-3, and 10-2 season happens, he stays. I think C.J. Donaldson, potential all-Big 12 first-team guy. The entire running back room is one of the top three or five in the Big 12. The offensive line, top three or five in the Big 12. I would put them number one in the Big 12 and top probably 20 in the nation right now. I mean, uh, we have multiple All-American guys, freshman yep, All-Americans. Freshman All-Americans. And there's people... Major, Yep. A monster. He's the best center in the nation, in my opinion. He's going to be 
an early second round pick most likely. And people, some people will disagree with, with them being number one in the nation, but I think they make a run at, at least for the conference. And again, in the nation, they've got a, a sh- they're one of the best offensive lines. Then looking though at you know, the quarterback room, and the questions with Garrett Green. And you look at the fact that the wide receiver room is completely gutted. What I do like you mentioned is, sure, they're all gone, but they all sucked. So, they were bad like, last year. Right. And we've got multiple proven guys coming in. Devin Carter from NC State, that's a big target. Huge. He can get the but ball. But who's going who's gonna to throw it to him, Jake? Who's going to throw it to him? Did you watch Garrett Green against Oklahoma and Oklahoma State last year? He looked I, pretty good. And I this did watch him. First year, we have a mobile quarterback since Skylar Howard in 2016 when we had a 10-win season. That's a name, yeah. Yeah, and before that, Pat White. Yeah, that's also a name. That's- we do great with mobile quarterbacks and running that run-play option. You know, we just are not a stand-in-the-pocket passing team. That's just yeah. not what West Virginia is built on. We're built on getting on the ground, keep yeah. defense guessing, and ex- – exploit their guessing because we honestly don't get the top-notch guys we get guys that are skilled crafty like look at Tavon Austin nobody wanted him and he was too small and but that's what worked for us he was quick we could do anything we wanted with him kind of like what the 49ers do with Diva Samuel doing this quick little handoffs you know that's what we thrive off of is players that are unpredictable uh going over our roster too We have a very young team last year. We had to throw a lot of guys on the field. I mean, CJ was a freshman and got hurt, didn't get to play the final couple games. Our running back room consists of two sophomores and a junior. I mean, our quarterbacks, we have Nico behind Garrett Green, who's a former four-star, who had just about half the country offering him, including Penn State, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I just got a phone call. No, you're good. You're good. Uh, speaking of Penn State, we have two Penn State transfers on our defense that are expected to step up big this year. One being a defensive end and one being a linebacker and Lance Dixon. Yeah. Uh, can you not see me still? Uh, no, but that's all right. I can still hear you. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. I got that phone call and it just went dark. Oh, uh, you're uh, good. In our secondary on our defense, we have a lot of players that had to play because they were just straight up young and inexperienced. But our D, our secondary was so bad that we were forced to put him in the game. Jacoby Spells played nine games, even though he was a redshirt freshman. Uh, we got I'm trying to think of these names off the top of my head. Aubrey Burks, who's a junior, preseason All Big Twelve. Yep, that's a junior. He only played seventeen games in his career so far. We just have a lot of young guys that have got the experience from last year's lackluster and transfers that didn't perform. So we are forced to play these young guys who now have Big 12 experience, who played late in the season against better teams in Oklahoma State and Oklahoma. I mean, uh, then we get transfers like Beanie Bishop at cornerback from Minnesota, who's used to playing these Big 10 teams with big bodies, being Ohio State, Penn State, he was yeah. there for three years, I believe, or it might have been four. I think he's a grad transfer this year. Um, and then on offense, for the first time in a long time, we have a superior tight end in Cole Taylor from LSU. Big body, blocking tight end that can also catch the ball. We have not had that since Trayvon Wesco in 2018 under Neil or under Dana Holgerson. Yeah. There's just a lot of new pieces that are being expected to step up or come into the program and do big things that are unpredictable. But I expect a lot from a lot of these young guys. Well, Jake, you've made a Mountaineer fan out of me. Um, And and I like what you said off the air that you feel like from a national standpoint. Oh, you're back. National standpoint, Mountaineers fans don't get a lot of, of love. And that's something that so many fans have had to grow with each other on really pack together to be able to get any attention. Yep, exactly. I mean, we can't even get our games listed in Eastern time zone. I mean, they go off of central time zones whenever they release the schedules every year. It's just absurd. We've been in the East Coast our whole life and our Eastern time zone our whole lives. And we've been in the Big 12 for 12 years at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Jake, 
Thanks for joining the show today. Quick hitter. I just, I, this is the first thing I've done with a fan. I just wanted to meet a fan who was unhappy and pissed off at me, deservedly so. Um, and I, there are so many people who go on social media and have very strong opinions, yourself included, that need a platform and they need a voice. And West Virginia fans don't get that. So I wanted to give you that today. Yeah, I appreciate it. It was a good time, honestly. It felt good to actually talk with somebody who covers us. Well, Jake, let's virtually shake hands here. And I, I, I don't hate you as much as I did over, over our Twitter. I love a good Twitter banter. Um, Same here. And I, I really do. I'm glad that you brought names that I had not heard of, t- t- transfers I had not heard of, young guys um, that, that enlightened how I see West Virginia. And now it, all it took was that for me to think, man, West Virginia is a dangerous team this year. So, so I, I, job well done, Jake. Thanks for doing this today. Yeah, of course. Anytime. And everybody else listening, if you're a pissed off fan, just tweet at me and we'll see what happens. If I'm bored of my cubicle, you might get a 10 minute, now 15 minute spot on the show. This has been a special edition. That's Jake Rice. Follow Jakey underscore Rice. That's Jake Y underscore Rice. This has been It Always Will Be Locked On. Special edition, Big 12. Let's go Mountaineers.